Thank you. Mr. Lord, are you an attorney? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, have you, uh, you've never been to law school? Uh, no, sir. Uh, in your job or in your capacity of your current job as a compliance officer, do you need to, are there any uh, aspects of that, the job as a compliance officer that requires you to be an attorney? me to be an attorney? No, sir. Right. So uh, even if you're uh, testifying against somebody in court as part of your job with the department, uh, does not require you to be an attorney? No, sir. Okay. Uh, when you do your job as, in, as a compliance officer, are you in your individual capacity or are you in a representative capacity? Uh, representative of the state of Texas. Okay, so you represent the state. Thank you. Um, Are you an expert in the interpretation and application of the Texas Constitution and laws of the state of Texas? No, sir. Are you qualified to testify against people in court that they're required to perform on their Texas law? Can you repeat that? Are you qualified? Now, you've already testified you're not an expert in the interpretation and application of the Texas Constitution and Texas laws. Uh, based on that statement, are you qualified to testify against someone in court that they are required to comply with Texas law. I'm still confused. Are you qualified to testify against somebody in court that they are required to perform under Texas law? Yes. But you're not an expert in the interpretation and application of Texas law? Oh. So what qualifies you, sir, to make uh, legal determinations of Texas law? Uh, basically, uh, education, uh, training, uh, in my background and experience. But you're not an expert in the interpretation and application of the law? No, sir. Okay. I'm not an attorney. You're not an attorney. Well, but you're also not an expert. Uh, no, sir. Okay. Where in your testimony did you present evidence that the laws or regulations were applicable to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Stevens, can you answer the question that was asked of well, all right. I'll rephrase, uh, sir. Did you testify in your in your in your uh, in the previous examination with Miss Neiman? Did you testify at all to any evidence about the applicability of the law to Mr. You actually tell you so what you're telling me is we can go through this transcript and you've testified and given evidence that the law is applicable to Mr. I'm not, I'm not real certain of your question, sir. I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, you've, you've testified, you're saying that you gave testimony that the law was applicable to Mr. I listened to all the testimony, and I, I, I know you've made opinions, but I don't know where you've actually stated this is the law and these are the facts to show it's applicable. I, I was asked a question. Get objection. No question. Uh, uh, Mr. Stevens, we've got a transcript. I will be reviewing the transcript before I um, uh, submit the decision. So um, if... if this sounds like more of an argument than a question. So if you would like to point out in your argument this has not presented evidence of this particular point, I will be reviewing the transcript or putting rather to uh, determine what evidence has been presented when I'm writing my So if you reserve uh, that for your argument, that would be very helpful. Okay. Well, let me go back here. Um, we'll get back to to uh, the state and the applicability of their law. We'll get back to that. Uh, Mr. Lord, you testified about a customer, and you said that uh, they, if you could just restate that, somebody, that uh, they were very happy with the product that Mr. had sold them, that it was happy, delicious food. 
I, I believe you're referring to a, uh, a, uh, a customer review that I viewed from a website called Local Harvest, where Martha Cox uh, basically basically made the indication she was happy with the product. Did you have any? Uh, you, but you didn't offer any testimony whatsoever that anybody was unhappy with the product. I had no no information of that. Do you have so you have no evidence that there that there are any uh, unsatisfied customers? I had I had no knowledge of that, sir. Oh, okay. Do you have any knowledge that Mr. or any evidence? I mean, Mr. Alexander uh, ha, uh, violated anybody's rights at all. Anybody's rights? Yeah. Did he violate anybody's rights that you're aware of? Uh, I, I'm not aware of any constitutional objections relevant. M- Mr being uh, accused of wrongdoing. I just want to, I'm just asking the witness if he's aware of any real wrongdoing by Mr. Alexander. Did he violate anybody's rights? Well, Mr. Stevens, I don't believe that he's just generally being accused of wrongdoing. He's accused of specific violations of the law. So if you could restrict your cross-examination to the, the allegations that are actually being made in the lawsuit, it will uh, assist us. Well, I believe when we go back to the motion to dismiss, that to have a proper case, they have to present, you know, I mean, to pr- have a uh, stand in the complaint against Mr. Mr. They have to present a case. And part of presenting a case is the violation of a legal right. So this goes to uh, the, the whole foundation of the accusations against Mr. Maybe you could reserve that then for your argument. Uh, but as far as questioning this witness on allegations that uh, are not being made in this case. I am going to sustain the objection. Oh, so, so just to clarify, he's not being uh, uh, he's not been accused of violating any, violating anybody's rights. Is that is that so? Can the witness verify that? The uh, the reports of the notice of violations uh, do not uh, have anything about violating. Uh, now I'm assuming you're talking about human rights, like freedom of speech and those type things. But there are none of those listed within the charges, sir. I just want to verify that. Now, accepting the statute and regulations, did Mister Alex cause any harm to anyone? I have no personal knowledge of any harm. Okay. Uh, so, except for the statute and the regulations, uh, you wouldn't believe that Mr. An- Mr. Uh, Alex is doing anything wrong. I uh, would disagree. What would you? All right, and why would you disagree? Our the, the Texas Meat and Poultry Inspection Act and our regulations and our administrative code require uh, minimum sanitary conditions. They uh, uh, require persons engaging in business. Must obtain a license. We call it a grant of co- uh, either. Uh, well, well, no, sir. I, I have to interrupt you because you're not ex- you're not understanding the question. I said accepting the statutes and regulations. Let's just pretend. You know, I, I just want to get at the heart of the matter. What you're accusing him of? If it was, if it, if you're accusing him of something uh, of being of doing something wrong, not taking into account the statutes and regulations, did he do anything wrong? Sir, what, I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I wasn't present when he actually slaughtered the turkeys. So you have no no evidence that he did anything wrong, uh, sir. I have plenty of evidence, in my opinion, that uh, Mr. Alexander slaughtered poultry without a license. Well, you have your opinion. Thank you. Sanitary uh, uh, conditions, and then sold that non-inspected and unlabeled. We call it misbranded product in interstate commerce or intrastate commerce. However, again, to, rec- to just to clarify, accepting your opinion on the law. You have no evidence he did anything wrong. Uh, beyond that, I uh, correct. Okay, so the only reason why you're uh, even looking and talking to Mr. Allen is because of your statute and regulation. I believe that would be a true statement. Okay. So did you just assume the law and the regulations were applicable, or did you make the determination on your own that the... Uh, laws and regulations were applicable to Mr. Uh, I, I don't. I don't assume. I, I read the, the statutes that basically states that persons engaged in these businesses are required to have a license, and they must meet these regulations. So you're the one who made the determination that the law and regulations apply to Mr. Alex. Not, 
not the final uh, regulation. My my job as a compliance officer, as an investigator, to, is to basically uh, detect uh, as an investigator, collect evidence, and present that to others who make the final determination. Is there a violation of law and regulation here? But what I'm asking you is, did you determine that the law was applicable to Mr. Al? Uh, I had reason to believe it was uh, applicable to Mr. Alex. I documented, a, I call it a report of uh, violation or investigation. I presented it through channels, uh, and others within the department agreed that uh, this was applicable to Mr. Alexander. Okay. Now, did you determine that Mr. Alexander was present within the state of Texas? Uh, I visited with him when we served the warrant. Well, well, sir, just you're going to have to limit to yes or no, uh, unless I ask for more. Did you determine that Mr. Alexander was present within the state of Texas? Vague. When? I mean, I. You know. Well, I, during the time of these alleged violations, did you determine that Mr. Ant was within the state of Texas? During the alleged violations, uh, sir, I do not know the exact date that the turkeys were slaughtered. All I know is the date that they were uh, sold and transported. Do you did you make a determination that Mr. Alexander was at any time within the state of Texas? And okay, yes or no? Yes. Okay, great. And do the laws and regulations of the state of Texas out operate outside of the state of Texas? No, oh. they do not. So if there was no evidence that Mr. Alexander was within the state of Texas there would be no grounds for these allegations. Uh, I can't answer that. I don't know. So would you charge, let me help you out there then, would you charge somebody outside of the state of Texas of violating Texas law? Possibly. So you, what you're telling me is that the laws of the state of Texas do operate outside of the state of Texas. No, uh, not not the laws. What I'm telling you, sir, is, is uh, we may have a, a remote uh, business uh, owner that's responsible for the company. He may be in uh, Alaska, as far as I know, but if the company he's responsible for is operating in Texas in violation of a law, yes, he could be charged. Okay, so... but ultimately responsible for the actions of his employees and his business. So you're saying that the... Uh, so it's, is it your testimony, then, too, that the uh, farm... Uh, family farm is within the state of Texas? Right. All right. If it was not within the state of Texas, would there be uh, any grounds for a violation? Yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Yes. Okay, great. So you have to have proof that uh, the farm is within the state of Texas for there to be a violation. Oh. So the farm and the farmer can be outside of the state of... Now, I'm getting conflicting. You, you, you already told me that the law does not operate outside the, the state of Texas. Now you're telling me different. So now the farm itself could be outside of the state of Texas, the farmer could be outside of the state of Texas, and it would still be a violation of Texas state law? It could be, sir. Our law prohibits the, uh, the transport or sale of non-inspected uh, products within the state of Texas. If it was slaughtered in Louisiana... Uh, and transported across here, uh, the Texas law would not apply to the actual slaughter in uh, Louisiana, but once they transported across our state lines and sold it in Texas, it would be in violation. Okay, so let me just... It, uh, ultimately, your, your answer is, is it possible for a violation to start somewhere in another uh, state and actually be applicable to state law? In my opinion, yes. But at some point in time, there has to be evidence that something is happening within the state of Texas. I uh, question... Well, what I'm getting at is, at some point in time, at least according to the witnesses' or, uh, statements already, uh, to be a, for there to be a violation of Texas law, there has to have had something happen within the state of Texas. That is an argument, not a question. I'm, I'm asking him to clarify his question. Does a violation have to occur within the state of Texas for there to be a violation of Texas law? Your question. Can you repeat your question, please? Yes, I, I just did. Does, the, does, does, it, does a violation have to occur within the state of Texas for the state of Texas law to apply? Yes. Okay. 
Now, if there's no evidence that anything happened within the state of Texas, then there could be no violation of Texas law. That would be a fair statement. Okay, that's all we're trying to get to. And you determined that Mr. Adler was within the state of Texas and subject to these regulations? Yes. Okay. Now, was that an arbitrary opinion, or was it based on facts current within your knowledge? Uh, I handed Mr. Alexander. Uh, oh. No, wait, oh, wait, just a yes or no, please. Was it was it, ba- was it was it an arbitrary opinion? Yes or no? A one-sided opinion? Is that what your question is, sir? No, no, no. Was it arbitrary? Uh, no. So it was based on facts? In my opinion, yes. Okay. Uh, well, tell me factually what is the state of Texas? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Can you... Sure. I asked him factually, what is the state of Texas? I still don't understand that question. Does the witness understand? Well, if I don't understand it, then it's not going to help much for the witness to respond. Is the, well, it, I have to tell you, it's a very simple question. He's testified to my client's presence within the state. He said it was not arbitrary. Uh, he said it was based on, he agreed it was based on facts, and I'm just asking him factually, what is the state of Texas? That's a very simple question. I don't think that's a very simple question. I it may not be a simple question to answer, but it's a very simple question to understand. Uh, well, there's nothing to rephrase. Either he knows what the state is factually or he doesn't. And if he doesn't and he cannot answer what the state is factually, well, then he's not qualified to be a witness that somebody was present within the state. And by his own admission, he would not be qualified to testify, or that by his own admission, there would not be a violation because he can't prove Mr. Adler's presence within the state. We're going to move on. Ask your next question. You're going to move on? Well, you've already testified, Mr. Lord, that the law and the regulations were applicable to Mr. Uh, I, uh, was that a, an arbitrary opinion? I'm not sure who Mr. Anderson is. I'm sorry, Mr. Alexander. I'm sorry, Mr. Alexander. Can you repeat your question? Sure. When you determined that Mr. Alexander was subject to the laws and regulations of the state of Texas, was that an arbitrary opinion? Objection, relevant. This is a case. Uh, against their family farm uh, and the location of Mr. Relevant necessarily. I sustain the objection. Can you move on, please? Yes. When you determined that the the laws and regulations of the state of Texas apply to the family farm, was that arbitrary? Uh, sir, I'm not familiar with. I, I, I'm sorry. I this. I apologize. When you made the determination that the and their family farm was subject to the laws and regulations of the state of Texas, was that an arbitrary opinion? Uh, no. No. So it was based on facts? Yes. Okay. Well, factually, what is the law of the state of Texas? Objection. Sustained. Please move on. Uh, no, what, the, the wit- I'm trying to get the mechanism that the witness determined that my client was subject to the laws and regulations of the state. He said it was not an arbitrary decision, that it was based on facts. So we need to get the facts. What is the law or regulation? And then we need to be able to connect that to the, uh, uh, the family farm. I don't believe that a law or regulation is a fact. Well, what it is and how it's applicable and how the witness determined it was applicable is relevant. And is a fact. Answer that question. How did you determine that the that the law was applicable to the family farm? Uh, that was not the question. We've already determined that he did that. We've already determined it was not an arbitrary legal opinion and that it was based on facts. What I want to know is factually what is this uh, abstraction he calls the law or the regulations? what they are factually, and then I, then the following question will be how to connect that to factually to the family farm. I have an objection. 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 Uh, it's not a question. Um, I object to the continuing um, argument. It's not an argument. The continuing argument uh, statement being made uh, by Mr. Uh, Stevens 
that it's not appropriate mm. emanation. I agree. Objection sustained. Please move on. All right, let me clarify this. So the witness can make legal determinations and uh, state that the law or the regulations are applicable, but what those laws or regulations are and how they connect to my client uh, is irrelevant, and I won't be able to question the witness on that? Objection to, again, the um, uh, speeches being made by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Uh, request that he be directed to, if he's going to continue with uh, cross-examination of the witness, that he simply ask questions. Uh, I am asking questions. You're asking me questions. You need to ask the witness questions. I am asking the witness question also. I like an answer on factually what is this regulation he claims, or regulations that he claims applies to family farm. It's already testified to that, so that's an absent answer. Please. No, it, he has not given me the facts. He's given an opinion that it applies, but he has not given the facts as to what it is. Stephen, you are not allowed to argue with the judge. I have instructed you to move on. I'm not arguing. I'm asking a question. And then I ask for a clarification. That's not arguing. I ask the witness a question. You may not ask me a question. I did ask the witness a question. I'd like an answer to it. It's your question, please. Mr. Lord, factually, what is the law of the state of Texas or regulation of the state of Texas? Factually, what is it? I'm going to sustain the objection to that question that has already been made and ask you to ask another question, please, or stop your cross-examination. Well, let's go through them. I want to go through the mechanics of how he determined the regulation and statutes were applicable to uh, family farm. So... I need the witness so I need the witness to actually answer. Does he know, Mr. Lord, do you know what the regulations st- factually are? Section A Your next question. Does the witness know what the laws are? Already testified to that. It's been objected to as asked and answered. The objection has been sustained, and I've instructed you to ask a different question or speech your cross examination. Well, I need to, I'm trying to get at how the witness determined the law was applicable. So let me just ask you directly, maybe we can get back to, uh, uh, to what I need to hear from you, sir. How did you determine that the statute and laws of the state and the regulations of the state of Texas apply to the, uh, to Mr. and to the family farm? and you are trying to make that through this witness, I will ask you to please restrain yourself from doing that and to make your argument at the close of this case. I'm not asking an argu- or making an argument. I'm asking the witness how he made a determination. That's not an argument. I'm asking him how he made his legal determination. That's not an argument. It's a question. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Yes. I uh, carry a copy of the Texas uh, Meat and Poultry Inspection Act with me. I've read it uh, numerous times, uh, along with the regulations and the uh, Texas Administrative Code. These are the the foundation for our, our meat inspection and food safety program. Uh, basically, I, I re- I'm capable of reading, uh, uh, and as a compliance officer. I conducted an investigation after finding product that was uh, I've been told came from their family farm. I obtained a copy of the uh, the uh, documents used to sell that product that's listed out their family farms as the seller of that product. I obtained a uh, uh, receiver statement from the the, uh, the firm saying it came from their family farm. I read the law that basically says it's a violation of this law for a person to sell non-inspected or misbranded products uh, basically uh, in intrastate commerce. Yeah, but what I'm getting to is the decision that it was applicable in the first place. Not necessarily what it says, but the applicability of that law or regulation. What is the, you know, I'm trying to get to the, 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 the mechanism that you used. 
Well, sir, in my in my opinion, it's applicable if if those uh, elements or those acts are thing. If a product was transported, that makes this law applicable. If it is sold, that makes it applicable. If it's not inspected or misbranded or adulterated, that makes it applicable. In the state of Texas, which we've already determined you can't testify to. That is an argument. That is not a question. Can you please move on and ask a question? Yeah, well, you, you're not allowing the witness or allowing a cross-examination on how the witness uh, connected what is called the law to the family farm. You're not allowing a cross-examination on that, and the entire their entire case is based on that legal opinion. Uh, as Mr. Lord has already testified, without the applicability of the law, there is no violation. And you won't allow a cross-examination on that. Take that argument. It's not an argument, and I'm, I'm getting a kind of offended by you keep... Keep characterizing a question as an argument. Now, if, if you want to deny cross-examination and you're not going to permit me to cross-examine cross -examine the witness, that's fine. I'll take that issue up on an appeal. But stop characterizing a question as an argument. 